ओके सो वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर लेक्चर ट्वेल्व बर्मी कंपोस्ट प्रोडक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी सो आज यू आर डिस्कसिंग लास्ट लेक्चर सो बर्मी कंपोस्ट वन ऑफ द एफिशिएंट कंपोस्टिंग प्रोसेस वेयर वी एनरिच द क्वालिटी ऑफ द कंपोस्ट बाय यूजिंग आर्थवार्म द आर्थवार्म आर यूज फॉर द डिकम्पोजन प्रोसेस एंड ऑल्सो दि आर्थवार्म दे कैन आर मेनी एंजाइम्स हरमोन्स टू द कंपोस्ट बेड्स ड्यूरिंग डिकम्पोजन दैट इनक्रीजेस द क्वालिटी ऑफ द कंपोस्ट फॉर Uh, use for the for um, so supplementing the requ uh, nutrient requirement of the crops. Uh, so, uh, so first of all, what is vermi composting? If you see, uh, so vermi composting is a simple biotechnological process of composting, in which certain species of earthworms are used to enhance the process of waste conversion and produce a better end product. So, the waste that means the waste is converted to wealth. Through vermi composting, that means so organic waste is converted to a suitable fertilizers or the organic fertilizers for use in crop productions. Next, the vermi composting is the process of recycling organic matter into nutrient-rich compost using arms worms. It is carried out generally under aerobic conditions. That means, as we discussed, that uh, this is a aerobic composting process. And where this waste materials are suitably, or the organic materials are suitably converted into uh, organic fertilizers using earthworms. Vermi compost is a sweet, stable organic manure produced as vermi cast by earthworm feeding on biological waste materials. The earthworm on feeding on biological waste materials, they are the uh, vermi cast. So this is a stable organic manures. It is efficient recycling process of animal agriculture and industrial wastes. Vermi compost is a mixture of worm cast, humus, live earthworms, and their cocoons. The major constituents are essential macro and micronutrients, enzymes, vitamins, antibiotics, humic acids, and growth hormones. That means the use of earthworm. In composting process, so the earthworm body parts or the en that contains enzymes, the vermi cast, vitamins, antibiotics, and also the uh, excreta of the earthworms rich in humus. So that is used as a good as a organic fertilizers, and that can be applied to the crops, and it's, it contains less pathogen or free of free of pathogen. You can say so that can help in uh, growth and development of crops. Without use of any chemical fertilizer, so the earthworm are the workforce in the vermi composting process. So we discuss the earthworm ecological groups. There are three groups of earthworm. So one is called the epig epigeic, and the other one is endogeic, and third one is anesic. The epigeic earthworm, this type of earthworm, they usually feed on litters. They don't feed on soil. They feed on litters. And they live on the litters, and they are pigmented, reddish and brown pigmented, and they only consume the leafy, leafy materials or even the litter. So this epigeic earthworm that is mostly suitable for vermi composting process. The second one that is endogeic. This is the endogeic earthworm. This is endogeic one. So this is a soil feeder. They live in top soil. Top soil. And there is no pigmentation in this uh, earthworm. They usually feed on soil, and those type of earthworm is not suitable for vermi composting process. And the third one, that is anesic earthworm. So they they live in the uh, subsoil layers, deeper soils, and they make the uh, in soils they make make the void the, in the holes and tunnels they can live, and they usually live the they can feed the litter. Also, they can feed on soil. They the dual the litter and uh, soils. So this earthworm also can be used for composting process. So ma mainly the epigeic type of earthworm is uh, used for the composting, or you can also anesic, but not the endoge endogeic earthworm. You see the uh, earthworm ecological group as you see. So epigeic, endogeic, and the anesic. These three groups. The epigeic means the word. Epigeic came from epi. Epi means top, and geic means earth. So they are living on the 
top soils or they live on mainly they live on the leaf litter with the leaf litter they live in the leaf litter and they degrade they consume they feed on the leaf litters and their sizes are very small size that is 1 to 7 centimeter and uniformly pigmented as a red and brown and lives in litter and consumes uh, decomposable organic matter these examples are epigeic acinia foetida this is the artha uh, acinia foetida that mainly used for the uh, for composting process in tropical and subtropical latitudes where the temperature goes maybe around 40 degrees celsius or more sometimes more than 40 degrees celsius the other earthworms they are also used for the composting that is a uh, utrilus this one and also uh, perinox species that is also used for the composting process and the other group of earthworm endogeic this is not suitable for composting they are the uh, top soil uh, dweller the endo means in and geic means earth so they live in the soils and they feed on the soils only they do not feed on the leaf litters this endogeic type of earthworm. Their size is small to large that is a 2 to 12 centimeter and this is a weakly pigmented or very no pigmentation in this type of earthworm. They live in burrows in organic mineral complex of soils and uh, they consume on the soil they feed on the uh, soil only. So, these are the few examples of the endogeic earthworm and the last one that is anesic species the anesic earthworm. So, there is nothing known about the name of this earthworm, but they are very large in size it is around 8 to 15 centimeter and they are also brown pigments in this earthworm. They live in deep vertical burrow in soil, but they feed in litters they can carry litters from the top soil to the bottom soil they feed on the litters and the casting on the surface and they are. so this type of earthworm also can be used for the composting process, but predominantly the epigeic species of earthworm either Asinia foetida and this edrulus and the peri perinox species they are used for the composting process vermicomposting process and why go for vermicomposting because uh, this is an important source source of organic manures helps in recycling any organic waste into useful bio fertilizer and leaves no chance of environmental pollution there is least pollutions in vermicomposting then eco friendly non toxic product consumes low energy input while uh, processing that improves uh, physical, chemical and biological properties of soils uh, without any residual toxicity and also uh, that reduces the incidence of pest and disease in crop productions and improves the quality of the agricultural produce as it contains many type of the um, bio compounds like the enzymes, hormones, growth, growth hormones that helps that supports in the growth of the crops and increase the content of secondary metabolites using the uh, vermicompost that helps in improving and having the better quality of the produce. Uh, so, if you see the, the process of composting uh, these are the uh, steps. So, as you discuss we should know the for the composting process what type of uh, waste materials should be taken and, and the mixing of the waste materials with the cow dung the fresh cow dung they make a slurry with waste material cow dung. So, type of waste materials available in the locality and also the, the ratio of the waste materials and the cow dung can be mixed together. So, after proper mixing of this, uh, this, uh, this is the, so where we can the mix the waste materials with the cow dung after proper mixing they can be loaded on the beds. So, on the varim compost bed this can be loaded after loading then we have to uh, release the earthworm based on the moisture and temperature content of the earth the vermi compost bed then so the next step is maintenance of moisture and temperature in bed and the release and uh, earthworm release so thereafter there is a turning of the uh, waste materials so that the, the temperature can be can be maintained can be judged and then the maturity uh, finally it takes around uh, 2 months or 60 days for maturity of the compost then you have to judge the maturity of the co compost based on the color of the compost granule size or the CN ratio of the compost and we will go uh, next we go for the harvesting that is we have separate the earthworm then you go for the processing means your drying and the packaging operations. So, uh, if you go to uh, the first one the waste uh, the waste type of waste the waste characteristic that means the waste can be used the animal manures or the oil seed residues fish manure industrial waste by, uh, fish manures or the industrial waste like potato potato industry waste uh, bag, bag so those uh, waste materials having low CN ratio 
less than 19. So, the uh, either the industry uh, the product industry any food industry waste materials or the animal manures oil seed residues having CN ratio less than 19 that means they have the higher end content they are the most suitable for the vermicomposting process and that can give the vermicompost with high end content. The other waste material is vegetable waste or the food processing waste including pulses, uh, oil seeds, tea or kitchen waste, green and succulent crop waste and wheat biomass and green manures having CN ratio higher than 19 but uh, 19 to 30 in that range they are also uh, moderately suitable for the composting process. And even the waste materials like water hyacinths, stubbles and the crop wastes, twigs and the crop foliage the CN ratio around 30 to uh, 85 they are also moderately suitable for composting. And the waste material like sawdust and the coir waste so industry from the, uh, the having the very high CN ratio and that is more than 90 or to 550. So, they are less suitable for composting process, but uh, however, uh, this waste materials can be used for composting provided we can uh, suitably use the fungus that cellular D fungus can be used. So, that they can decompose the cellulose and reduce the composting period periods for the especially for the sawdust and the coirists. And mixing up uh, waste materials. So, yeah, so in this case, uh, when you in the, uh, the tank where you can put the waste materials, the uh, waste mixture, animal, and the plant based organic waste are generally uh, mixed together. So, while mixing, we should see the type of waste materials and the CN ratio of the waste materials. So, we should uh, make the mix of waste materials so that the CN ratio should be in the range 30 to 40 is to 1. Uh, before mixing the plant waste generally undergoes size because as we discussed size reductions by cutting or the crushing machines by shredding. So, we can uh, keep the size around 3 to 5 centimeters. So, after size reduction the plant based organic waste are mixed with animal based waste like cow dung. So, there is a mix of the uh, waste materials or with the plant or the crop residues or the plant residues with the cow dung. And for uh, increasing uh, the rate of decomposition but hastening the decomposition process. So, we can you can use the uh, compost accelerators. So, those are the cellulitic and lignolytic microorganisms they can be added to the waste mixtures. So, that they can uh, uh, increase the rate of decomposition and uh, uh, reduce the composting periods. The proportion of the uh, cow dung in uh, waste mixture should be 30 percent that means, the minimum 30 percent cow dung is used while mixing the waste materials. If there is unlimited supply of cow dung the maximum proportion of cow dung can go up to 70 percent, but not beyond that. That means, so it should be 30 percent minimum and 70 percent maximum uh, cow dung should be mixed with the waste materials when you go for the uh, vermicomposting. And now, we will show you uh, a video showing the how the waste materials uh, are mixed and they are also um, uh, loaded in the compost beds and the when we mix the waste materials we prepare a fresh cow dung slurry and the cow dung slurry is mixed with the waste materials and uh, after that they are loaded in the compost bed. Uh, so, uh, these are the qualities of good compost. Uh, so, if you uh, prepare your the waste materials and the conditions inside the compost bed, we can get a quality which can meet the requirement for this organic farming. And uh, we will discuss now the finally. So, what is the benefits of the compost application? If you see the benefits of compost, compost is a storehouse of energy for growth and multiplication of microbes and their activity in soil which is vital for plant nutrient cycling. It supplies both macro and micronutrients. Then it provides the growth promoting substances which stimulates early plant growth and it acts as a soil conditioner uh, as it improves the physical condition of soil such as soil tilth. Soil tilth means it is a equal proportion of macro and the micro pores. Then that influence the water holding capacity of soils of course, cutting capacity. So, that is there, those are regulated with having the high the adding the uh, compost. The compost it is a pathogen free as all the pathogens are killed at high temperature. Then it increases the biological act activity of soils and produce crops uh, growth with the less disease because addition of compost is a pathogen free. It can give a disease free or the pest free environments. 
So, these are the some of the benefits of compost applications. Uh, so, while making the compost and the applying, so you should be very careful and uh, uh, meeting the principles of the compost preparation. Okay, thank you.